Hello fellow modelers, I recently finished a Soviet crashed helicopter. Now in today's video I'm going to take it to the next level and create a diorama for it. Let's get started. There is going to be big transmission tower near the helicopter. I think it will be a crucial element to include. Don't worry, though it will be a bit smaller after a minor collision with the helicopter. I found stunning 3D model of a tower and was inspired to create a blueprint from it. I used 72 scale to ensure accuracy. After that I designed new construction parts and added details like bolts and nuts in Blender. The last step was to print everything from resin. I am fixing the position with an ordinary poster gum. You can use resin for gluing, but super glue works as well. I use tidying profiles for small construction elements. Oh, and just in case you are interested, the 3D parts of a tower are available for my Patreons. Right now, one side is already done, and I only have three more to go. Although the result isn't perfectly precise and some resin parts are slightly bent, it doesn't really matter, since it will be damaged anyway. It would be really nice to have this tower in my diorama undamaged, but unfortunately I don't have enough space in my showcase. I managed to fit the helicopter model and tower onto the base that measure exactly a 4 sheet size, which is 30 to 21 cm. I tried to set the dimensions small as possible, but the helicopter model and tower didn't allow me to make it smaller. At least I can easily save some space by pushing the tail rotor to the angle. And the tower will be on the edge only with the three pillars. I will cut out the rest. I use styrofoam board as a base for the whole diorama. It is more robust and resilient than cheaper polystyrene. You can buy it in any building supply store. I am cutting holes for ponds. This will not only add beautiful feature to the landscape, but it will also make the terrain less uniform. I am planning to position the helicopter in the way that will be partly in the water at an angle, so it will give a more dynamic look to the area. Let's destroy something. The resin has very low temperature stability, so I can easily bend or modify the shape with a hairdryer. I came across some images of the towers that have been completely destroyed, and it's quite interesting. It seems that if one of the main supports is damaged, it can cause the chain reaction that leads to the collapse of the entire structure. I know, it is sad because it took a lot of time, but also somehow perversely satisfying. I think it is important to have a clear understanding of the position of all elements before moving forward, taking time to create mock-up tests and carefully consider the final outcome. I am making the frame from balsa wood. I like it because it is soft and easily processable. I found that many people prefer diorama without border, so it is a good idea to focus on shaping the terrain first. Once you have established the basic shapes, then you can remove excess framing to achieve a borderless look. I am trying out new technique for my terrain, where I am using a mix of water, plaster and sawdust for the first terrain layer. The sawdust really helps to make the mix fluffy and easily work with it. This layer is only for covering ugly grey styrofoam and unifying the shapes. Try to get rid of excess water with a paper napkin, otherwise too much humidity can damage the balsa frame. Also, you will reduce drying time. I finished setting the shapes of the terrain, which means I can now easily remove unwanted frame edges. I like using Russian and Dark Earth Pigments shades for my diorama projects. They add depth and realism to the landscape. The best part is that I don't need to use a paint later on. I have been experimenting with a mixture of PVA glue, water, pigment and sawdust to create a consistent ground layer for areas where will be water. It's taken a bit of testing and error, but the end result is worth it. 
I have different materials for creating scenery. I like building railroad models and finding ways to make them look as realistic as possible. While there are plenty of useful things you can buy to enchant your models, however, I have found that many of the best materials can be found outside for free. It is amazing what you can do with a few things, some rocks, a little bit of moss. It is all about getting creative and using what you have at your disposal. I am creating the bottom of the pond from static grass of different lengths, rotten wood, rods, soft gravel or stones. Try to mix PVA glue with a brown pigment to achieve a darker ground shade. I found that when it comes to swamp terrain, the static grass applicator isn't really necessary. The outcome tends to be quite uniform regardless, so I have been using fingers to apply the grass instead. I found that using turfs of a wide looking grass and applying it randomly really helps to create a desired effect. If you have seen my older diorama projects, then you know that I like to use dry moss. This one is 4 years old and still looks great. I store them in ordinary paper box and applied no conservation chemicals. It will create lovely details in the water. Ok, now I have a better idea about the final outcome. These terrain details are not final, I only needed basic ground shapes and details to place the helicopter. The destroyed tower in this angle looks weird, there is not a lot of space around. What about this position? It will be partly underwater and create a lovely background for the helicopter. I am spraying construction with an acrylic red-brown shade and the rest of the rust shading I am painting with a Vallejo shades. What will be nuclear zone without barrels and other mess in the water? I use spare parts from old kits and accessory sets. I can finally fix the helicopter into the scenery with a super glue. One barrel of the nuclear material is opened, so why not to add a green luminescence powder? It will be a lovely hidden effect which you can see only at the night.
the resin water is partly transparent, so you must play with the details that will be underwater. I am covering the diorama edges with an ordinary transparent packaging tape. It holds better and is more resilient than paper masking tape. Finally, water. I have two components clear resin that I am working with. It isn't super clear, but suitable enough for my purposes. I need around 300 grams of resin, although I think probably need only 250. However, I have learned that it is good practice to mix a little bit more than you think you need, just to be sure. I need dirty water, so I am mixing one drop of the acrylic paint. One drop is just fine if you want to see details underwater. I am creating small puddles on the terrain, it will make a feel of a swamps. Ok, it looks cool. The drying time of the resin is 24 hours, but I prefer 2 days. After 24 hours is the surface still a little bit sticky. Oh dear, the resin has better flow than I expected. Never mind, it will be fun to fix and make it even better. So it's time for vegetation. I usually begin with PVA glue and static grass. It's a great way to add some green to your landscape. If you want to achieve more natural look, try to combine different lengths of a static grass. The combination of long and short can create a nice, wild effect. It is all about experimenting and finding that works best for your project. The dark dust sand makes soft ground texture and makes the final effect darker. Making large diorama models is difficult, because you must play with the details on every single square centimeter. Therefore, always try to make your models small as possible. In this detail, you can see how easily you can take advantage of the different static grass lengths. The small one is for lying grass and turfs, and the tall one is for the rest. Good diorama terrain, especially with nature, has one basic rule, that is diversity. It doesn't matter if it's a forest, field or swamp, always try to add different flowers, bushes or grasses. You can simply buy large sets with the bushes, and if you are making some to scale dioramas, it will last for years. And with a combination of natural materials, you can achieve splendid results.
I have water on the whole terrain, so if I need some puddle, I can simply remove grass around. The low vegetation is partly done, so the next step is larger bushes. I like seafoam trees which are very versatile and you can do a lot of with them. You can buy the whole box for a few dollars and it will last forever. Dry grass is fine detail. The next step is water. It is good to add fallen leaves accumulated around the sides and helicopter. Model scene is making soft seafoam trees with applied leaves. They have a large variety of colors, so it is not a problem if you want more green. I am making a diorama that captures the essence of the late autumn season. My color scheme focuses on yellow, brown and soft green shades, which will add a moody and dark feel to overall atmosphere of the diorama. One pilot died in the accident. So, as a memento, there is a small grave with a cross. There are many details on the ground, but the tower looks somehow empty. Therefore, I came up with the idea to glue some moss on the construction. It should add some texture and depth to the tower, making it less bare and more visually attractive. There is a lot of residual static grass, but if you apply the good quality PVA glue, you can use a vacuum cleaner. The resin partly soak into the balsa wood, therefore I am cleaning excess resin with a grinder. I am cutting out resin edge because the water rose there. Vallejo still water is great for soft water layer, also you can make a soft waves. I have for the diorama only one figure, and that is Stalker. I purchased a large 3D model, rescaled it to send to scale and printed it. It could be a second abandoned pilot who survived and lived for a while in the wasteland, or just a random passes bee thinking about life. Or you can write me a comment with some cool story. Do not think too much about making some difficult edges. Simply paint the wood with a dark paint. The details are on the diorama, not on the frame. Mm -hmm. 
The last detail which I do not like is water. So let's improve it a little. There should be more water vegetation around and on water. So I'm mixing no green leaves with Vajho still water. I'm making water less calm and uniform with a Vajho water effect. It will become transparent when it dries. I printed isolators for power lines. Some I applied on the tower with wires and some I placed destroyed on the ground. I look at the stash and found lovely photo etched reeds and nettles. It will bring even more diversity and primarily details. Last but not least I purchased and printed small ravens. I have been meaning to put together this diorama for years even since 2011, but I rather made other projects that seems easier and less time consuming. I have finally done it, and it's a great feeling. It turned out exactly how I imagined, maybe even better. The 3D printing made this thing so much easier, and all the skills I pick up from my previous projects really came in handy. I enjoyed the entire process, and I hope that you pick up a few tips along the way. If you are a fan of the post-apocalyptic themes like I am, that I highly recommend giving this try. Ok, thank you for watching and see you next time with the other funny projects. Now it's talker time.